Welcome, everyone. This is episode two, season one of the Geometric Theater. Thank you for being here. Please enjoy. Buddy, I've been enjoying your posts the last while. Thank you. So how's everyone doing today? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing really good. Actually, we're having Christmas here at my parents' house today. Nice. So, um, let's see. Who all do we got in the group here, guys? We've got, it looks like, Chris um, from Take Back Space. Uh, me. Um, who else do I see here? Is this... Want to introduce yourself to to the oh, yeah. group? Sure, you bet. So this is this is Donald Adams. Uh, the uh, I run Sound of Stars. Um, we have platforms on different media sites. Uh, the my group members often refer to me as Doc Stars. It's a it's a funny nickname that they ended up giving to me. So, um, but that's why I'm, I'm from Canada, Alberta, Canada. Okay. If you only had a limited amount of time and you wanted to address some significant issues that you know were occurring to you know all or most of you, what kinds of ideas might come to the you know to the top first? Um, it, I mean, if you if you want to just toss a subject out, that's okay. I'm just thinking that if we have limited amount of time, you know, what, you know what would what would serve your interests best? Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Can you hear me now. Yeah, it's better. Okay. Um, I think maybe my mic got muffled or something. Well, I was thinking uh, possibly we could talk about how uh, tr trophic cascades and how uh, the how the geometry of how wolves affect the topology of the um, the creatures, the rivers, and the meander of the streams. Um, the different things like that on a, on a, on that, that level, but also on different scales, trophic cascades. Sure. I like that. Um, I know the because, video you're talking about. Yeah. I know, I know that the, the, uh, terror, terraforming. And then, um, they show the pack of wolves basically being introduced into a certain region. Right. And, uh, yeah. And they start uh, they start hunting and they start moving certain wildebeest, I guess, and the wildebeest graze differently, and then grass grows because it needs to, right? And then you actually create this this like what you said the cascade um, that changes the landscape of Earth. Uh, I I would throw my thought in there is that behavior uh, likely works on the same geometry. So p what people consider instincts and natural selection and survival is actually based on you know the the hyperboloid and the torus and basically the the intrinsic geometry of nature uh, actually is what so drives like the, so like the ge geometric field that's coming off of the sun a perpetual um like cascade or uh something like that i think both i mean we talked about this uh and uh Doc Stars, please cut, stop me at any point and ask me to, to clarify or to do whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but we had talked about, um, or at least this is something that I've been thinking about. I'm like, what is time, right? What could you, what, what can you consider time uh, besides recognition of pattern, right? Or recognition of state. Uh, and I'm thinking that if, if time is like a thin etheric plasma layer that emits from every particle quantum particle celestial body human body in the universe and you have these layers of time um maybe it's not quantifiable just as like a measurement of pattern change but also as a physical realm so we live in in the time bubble of the sun and uh, we have our own time bubble and the interaction those nodes where the transverse waves meet are these actual are, are 
our, our pinches where we see more matter manifest or thought manifest along these these ripples that that meet each other like ripples in a pond so the sun would have a giant perturbation in the ether and we'd have a smaller one and where the, those waves met you'd have these new um pinches that created even more kind of reverberations so in instinct ultimately follows defined field lines is the thought yeah and those are like field lines of morphogenetic geometry the morph morphogenesis morphic I, fields maybe i feel like yeah i mean like the recursive the 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 basically that shape right the the onion skin the onion sh uh, the shells or onion mm -hmm. skins around a point um, follow a torus and a hyperboloid or an hourglass shape. Um, mm -hmm. They follow the kind of electric circuit model that Don Scott presents. It also follows the mutual mass acceleration that Ken Wheeler proposes. And uh, those those lines that emanate, and, and we, we've seen it in a lot of your drawings in the, in yeah. the Doggart set, but uh, not, not but and in addition to, Mm -hmm. Where, you know, if everything's emanating along these field lines or emanates these field lines intrinsically, then they're going to have you're going to have crosstalk and, and that crosstalk or or those intersection points are what I, I find fascinating. Do, do those take on a life of their own? Do they become new nodes in, in our reality? Do they create right. ripples and time bubbles like they're like Lichtenberg? figures you can see that everything is hair really it's the cilia that allows us to breathe mm -hmm. the cilia in our lungs that allow us to breathe and it's hair that grows and is replaced and grows and is replaced and it's if you look at earth it's the the earth the cilia of the earth that allows the earth to feel is the trees and the plants and right. that's where Great life point. begins from the cycle almost so you can see and and the way the growth pattern of um, Lichtenberg flow is the exact same thing of trees and um, Birkeland currents. They're, they're, um, I would even think that the, the, some of the fibers of the wood would be counter-rotating um, from one year to the next or from the winter to the summer. The fibers just to turn on and turn off maybe um, the flows. Uh, and what builds the rings and the dendrochronology of it. Uh, but if you look at it, that's exactly, you cut a tree and you get the exact same thing as the, um, a, like a light core sample, an ice core sample, a Birkeland current. It's that concentric ring pattern going inward. Um, I mean, it's the same, if you, not to be morbid, but if you chop a limb. Yep. Yep, you got that layers yeah, exactly. You got layers and layers and layers and layers of, uh, or or even your torso. Yep. You know, I mean, uh, pinch, pinch leg. compressions and rarefactions, right? Like we, I, I, I think we talked about it, but like the head is like a bubble, and then the neck is a pinch, and then the, there's a bubble, then a pinch. You know. Right. Um, excuse me, Donald. Is there is there any way you could uh, um, mute your? Uh, oh, you bet. Your yeah, just because we hear the typing in the background. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then whenever you want to, you know, s speak up or say anything, feel free to just we'll do. And, uh, yep. and holler anytime. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> uh, I have, uh, I'm happy to contribute. I just wanted to hear you guys out first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well, I'd yeah. love to hear what you want to say, actually, unless, uh, unless you oh, want to yeah, give us another minute. What, what, what I'm doing here on my end is these are topics that we've discussed um, a fair bit. And so what I'm doing is I'm just taking some of the source material from our group and I'm just sticking it into one page and then I'll, I'll send you guys the link here shortly. Oh, oh great. Yeah. Nice. I can, and then what I can do is I can put that as um, pictures and stuff in the background for the uh, for yeah. this video, if you don't mind, and then I'll just link it to you as the mm -hmm. source. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Cool. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to meet my mic here. Yeah, awesome. buddy. So... Um... I guess I've been thinking about anatomy a lot lately, right? Because Me too. Um, you look at the bone structure and you look at how muscle packs around the bone and you look at the epidermis mm -hmm. and the body is really just, an, you know, the, the universe is imprinted 
upon us and or vice versa you know like the universe yeah. is is a the version field, of us the field creates the form and we are the form but what is the field the you field, know you could say we're the field and that's the form right if it's you know one existing with that with the other exactly yeah. both yeah yeah and and it's like it's almost like the idea of humans couldn't exist until it got sucked into the a collective like furnace like a a, a large black hole or um you know a z pinch like what if that's the deal like nothing can really exist until the idea gets sucked uh, on larger scales and then it's blown out on smaller scales throughout the um the subunits and the fractal um it, like you see that there is uh there's a, a there's a geometry to black hole or, or i keep saying black holes there's a geometry to the uh, the 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 z pinches at the center and this geometry it's very easily studyable and it's the same thing that opens and closes your retina and your eye uh, and or, yeah. or your pupil and the flush and that rush of passion of blood that pushes your eyes open um, and and keeps you uh, cognizant because you're feeding your senses. You're not numbing your senses. You're being in tune with your senses as uh, as so much of us turn into the sheeple or what whatever that geometry is, which is very um, Look, yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because I've been I've been on this YouTube channel recently, which I really enjoy, called Philosophy Overdose, and I'll, I'll let me share it with you. I really yeah. love it. It's like old fifties and sixties, like real natural oh. philosophers having discussions, and it's a totally oh. different world of how like like people one how TV used to be. <laughs> and to how um how people think about the world and i was listening yeah. to this whole discussion it was between uh kagan and craig a couple of like big big deal like uh professor professorial types and i'm just going to drop it in here real quick but listen to how they talk and you'll see that there's this giant like to me you know i could sound very arrogant here conceited by saying like they're missing something but what they're what what the, the perspective on when you introduce something like the big bang and the 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 heat death of the sun you philosophy takes a hit i feel like you can't really make a good argument about exist, existence or existentialism um without allowing for the fact that life is a continuous process and so you listen to somebody like alan watts and you know krishnamurti or any of the great yogis talk about how life is a continuous flow um and then you listen to these great so-called uh, i don't want to take anything away from them they work very hard i'm sure but they definitely be, there's this there's a sense that um no nobody can know what's beyond death and nobody can know what's beyond this and no one can gauge this far and uh, i think that is taking away from the human experience because you already have your eyes and you already made your lungs and you already came into existence from death uh continue continually uh validating each other and saying hey uh, it's impossible to know you know we can never know it's just you know we're all going to die and so we can never know but i think that well, actually is a hindrance in a way right um, I, I think yeah. i think sorry to interrupt no, no, but please, i think it's ahead. a drawing it's a drawing within and introspection and becoming of, uh, if you, okay, for me, I don't know who I am, but if I draw closer to what I understand is God, God reveals who I am by me drawing closer to whatever God is. Um, and that's how, how I, that's how I get to know who I am as a person, um, by being shaped by this external field and this dreamscape of a spiritual union and a reality with, with understanding and 
and drawing ever closer to a unification with the creator. A lot of people understood this at one time to be our purpose. And in heaven, the Bible talks about that's all you do. Well, one of the things is you you forever get to understand more unification with the creator. And just that, that, that adrenaline rush and those secretions of hormones that happen when you're drawing close to uh, God or the, God or the creator, that itself is so rewarding. It's discovery. It's pure unification. Um, and then if you can mimic that it, with your day-to-day -day skills, if you're an artist, if you're making music, if you're doing motion picture, podcasts, whatever medium you do, electronically, um, you can take that electric signal that you get in your meditation state, and you can reverberate that electric signal into your artwork and show off the creator. And that's what a lot of people w would tell you not to do that and make images of gods, because that, that no, God forbid that a man creates so, something so beautiful and perfect, we have to destroy it. And then you worship the, the cr created things. And I don't know, it's just, I got off on a tangent there, but you see where I'm coming from. I got a couple of thoughts, but uh, Doc, do you have any thoughts? You want to jump in? All right, let me let, let us know. Um, yeah, so I was, uh, buddy, two things. One, maybe clarify your thoughts just for the sake of it, for uh, like creator and God, what that means to you. And then right. two, um, I would argue that like this idea that we're not supposed to <coughs> worship many gods or like make images in God in God's image. I think that's what actually creates these, um, what creates great things. It discourages 95% right. of okay, creatures I, and dots to not create so that 5% create and it seems so much more magical. That's my thought there. Go ahead. I, I'm just going to jump in. I, uh, I appreciate everything you guys have been saying. Um, you know, uh, I guess one of the things I look for if I have conversations like this is, you know, how informed are the people about the subjects they're speaking about. So it's very apparent to me that you both uh, seem, you know, reasonably informed about what's being discussed. <clears throat> um, my guess is that uh, your experience and approach is probably very similar to mine in my group. And um, I think that there could be some divergence, which is not a bad or a good thing. Uh, but what I'll try to do here is I'll try to make some contributions that I think are uh, on point with what your interests are that we're discussing. And then what I'll try to do also is maybe just, uh, you know, contribute some perspective that uh, hopefully will be meaningful and useful. So um, there's quite a lot of information that we've assembled on these topics, and it's a big job to try to condense it down uh, and make it bite-sized for this conversation, but I have done that. Um, so let's do this. You can circulate this information. Um, I don't see your guys' faces. Is that, should I be seeing faces? Do we want to do that? What, what's the story there? Hello? No, I don't, I don't particularly do that. I've been, yeah, I don't, okay. I don't do that. Okay. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do here is... Uh, if I do a share screen, you guys can see that? Yes. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to do a share screen and then just um, let me know when you can see it. All right. We can see it. Okay. So I'm just going to send you this link. Um, the page is not fancy. This is just basic notes I've dumped in here. I, I think that really <clears> – <throat> are you guys familiar with Ocelons? Uh, I haven't heard of Asylums. Okay, so <clears throat> I, uh, one of the problems that I, I see happening in groups um, like the kinds that we circulate through is that there seems to be a propensity towards uh, a sort of a, a casual uh, philosophizing uh, and incorporating kind of like a, 
a, a synthesis of lots of different uh, sort of spiritual or religious ideas and sort of superimposing these notions almost like word salad on top of either known um, artifacts of the arcane sciences that we're investigating or it's there we're attempting to to fill the holes in our philosophical or spiritual uh, uh, I you know um, I guess quest and there's nothing wrong with that like I don't want to I don't want to critique that I mean we all do it I've done that and I'll probably keep doing it but <clears throat> I think it's important to try to differentiate and really be aware and understand when that's happening and when we're not consciously aware um, because um, I think that there are significant, really huge chunks of information that are either um, not examined, uh, they're not known about, and it's like they're resting either in dustbins or crevices that if we could... Did you guys ever see a movie called The Bothersome Man? No, that's no. A, I'll look that uh, up. Yeah, so... so uh, that's a real head trip. It, it's 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 a really freaky movie. Um, I think it was it's an Icelandic film. Uh, it's basically about a guy who seems to have died, but when he wakes up, he's in another world which is very similar to his. It's better in some ways, but it's also a, it's really annoying. Um, and then something bizarre in that movie happens, and I won't say what it is. Uh, but I think I think that what's going on here is that. Uh, sometimes people can mistake uh, a kind of inner magical thinking and a disorientation, confusion as to the way things are, the way they should be, and then the conceptual ideas and, you know, the searching for scientific truths. And, you know, in order for us to really be at the top of our game, in order for us to perform and understand and attain in the way that we're hoping to, ultimately, uh, we need to be able to have some kind of lodestone. Are, you guys are probably familiar with Richard Merrick. I've you know, heard the name. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at it. Yes, he's he's actually, um, I've talked with him quite a bit, and he's going to be coming on uh, another podcast that I do. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Richard's so great. I'm going to... I'm just going to like um, also throw this link out, out to you guys. Um, the reason that these are conversations I've had with other people. Uh, so you're welcome to check that out. Scratch David Sarita. I've, uh, he's chased I've me down. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's just nonsense. It's just absolutely horrible. He's been chasing. I, after I did it. learn a little bit from him, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I would suggest you unlearn it really quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but his the, interference theory is great. Uh, Richard Merrick's interference theory is fantastic, and one of the reasons it's really uh, useful is because the basic premises in that theory are not only practically uh, something that, that can be applied, but you can use a lot of the concepts and structures in his theory f to gauge, assess, and discern other bodies of information for harmony and disharmony. One of the problems that I see happen in this kind of research and related is you get some, they're just erroneous notions about nature, reality, the universe, where you've got the whole kind of duality versus non-duality type mindset. And a lot of this is just, it's absolute rubbish. If you take a look at reality as it is, and you actually have a correct understanding it becomes much easier to orient, understand, use, uh, and apply a lot of these concepts. You'll find a lot of that in Merrick's work. And so when you take a look at the basic understanding of the octave, for example, you begin to understand and discover that, um, you know, the different musical intervals have uh, both qualitative and quantitative associations that are linked to all kinds of different aspects of nature. And you'll see a lot of this. Um, I'm guessing that you're probably consciously seeing it. Uh, and in other cases, you may be kind of instinctively guessing at it when you're working at elements in the Doherty set. It'll be just naturally there. But I want to just oh, come yeah. back. Constantly I just want to everywhere. I just want to come back to this page. You guys can see this on the line. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Dragon Kings, Black Swans elephant migration patterns. If not, I've, not uh, 
Okay, so the perturbations that you talked about when we first began this conversation, it there is a, I mean, in, in my subjective opinion, there's certainly a geometric element to it, but it's not something that I would uh, classify as being primarily or mainly a geometric concern. It, it falls more into areas of study related to these topics. So there is a relationship for sure. But right, what's happening? May I uh, ask if, if you're familiar with Jeffrey West's work and scale? Uh, that name sounds familiar. Can you describe it a bit more? Oh, yeah. His, uh, he has put together um, basically the logarithmic scaling units of, uh, of metabolic rates of all an of, of a lot of different animals and uh, and it and he shows that there's uh, quarter scaling and three quarter scaling uh, ratios between creatures and how cities grow the life death uh, right. the life and death of cities and algorithms and basically networks right uh, was he a student of Hartmut Mueller uh no nope um but I would love to talk to some students of Hartmut Mueller, if not Hartmut Mueller himself, which I definitely will. Um, he's a, he's out now. Right? He's what? He's out now. Yeah, he's out. Yeah, he's yeah. Out, out of jail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, you're, dude, you're, you, what you're talking about and the people you're, you're talking about is exactly the, yeah, the, the direction of the swing of things in the fringe of, of the, um, not even esoteric. It's just like right on the edge of how we're going to go into these fields experientially sensually and uh, and and i have faith that's what i that i'm coming out with my first book for the doherty network and the doherty set and it's it's uh, called uh, the reality game and the reality game is actually building these networks and going into them and they're easy it's already done we just oh, have to, we can even up. build them with micro, oh, we can even, um, we can build these patterns is what I'm saying. But sure, you. sure. Yeah, uh, I think that makes sense. And um, I think it was about maybe a couple of years ago, a year and a half, a couple of years ago, uh, I got a, a email from uh, Hartmut and he had mentioned that he would be interested in having like either a one-on-one -on -one or group discussion. So uh, if he's still doing okay, uh, he needed time to kind of recover, but he might be someone that we could actually bring into conversations. Uh, I, I think that the concepts and ideas that you have, like specifically, technically, I like them. I think they have value. Yeah. Yes, uh, I and think so too. I, um, I think, I, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it's important to try to like take a lot of the concepts that you have. Uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm sure that you've already done it. I, I think I've seen examples of it, but then actually beginning to apply it like to real world type, you know, situations. I, I think there's oh, real yeah. value there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. Um, I I just uh, found some documents and passed it around, even on this group, uh, the geometry view, geometric view. Um, about magnetic levitation and vortices and vorticity and i'm going to build those structures um, out of bubble sculpting those specific vortex uh, that you can build acoustics that you can levitate with acoustics um who knows you might be able to we might be able to do it on a large scale with these models or at least show the models um and uh, with the, I don't know, because, you know, really, it's a vortexture on all scales, and the vortexture is what we come into. And, uh, yeah, of course. That's the way I see it anyway. No, no, I, um, I think I think that makes sense. Uh, uh, the, the reason that I, I brought up these particular links, and I had asked you if you were familiar with Ocelons, is that um have you got can you see my screen still yes oh yeah are you familiar with the i can't pronounce this correctly the belosov shabanovsky reaction uh, yeah yeah okay so so basically what this is it's it's a times it's a time space oscillator that's 
chemical based. Huh. And the reason that that's important, uh, well, there's a number of reasons that that's important. Um, uh, the an easy way for you to investigate real world natural applications of your Doherty set would to be observing how it interfaces and interreacts with other kinds of systems that are both complementary and not. And the reason that I say that, for example, is if you take a look at, uh, say, ocelons usually occur on membrane surfaces. So you've seen them before. An example is it's a summer day, you go for a walk, you're on a bridge, the bridge crosses a river, there's a, there's a mild wind, you look down, and you see those curious patterns that appear on the surface of the... Uh, you've probably seen the um, the vortex pairing, you know, the Cooper pair uh, that it happens on the swing pool surface. Yes. You know, you, right. So yeah. it's not... It's So that's not... Those are not ocelons. Um, but what, when you look at the surface of, uh, you know, like a lake or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it'll look mm -hmm. like a, a bunch of compressed... Uh, honeycombed radiating uh, circles that are mainly symmetric with, with a small degree of, degree of asymmetric variance, but they're oscillating. Wow. I, I, I'm sure you've seen those. Oh but, yeah, but, yeah, all but, over the lake. Yeah, but the reason the reason that I bring that up is that you can use this particular reaction and also other kinds of diffusion reaction systems to gauge uh, observe and monitor things like your Doherty set functioning in real time. And what I mean by that is, for instance, if you had a membrane or series of membranes and you were tweaking it from a Doherty set perspective, you should be able to see changes in the diffusion and reaction patterns. And then if there was, say, something that was in the local proximity of occurring diffusion and reaction patterns, if you had a way to modulate those patterns outside of Doherty set stressors, then you should see something unusual going on with your Doherty set itself. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bounce this off you guys. You can check that out. Uh, I don't know. Can you see? You see this here? Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So this this is a very simple representation and uh, ocelons. You now here they're talking about. The, the, Sorry, say again? Oh, it's the cellular automatons. Right, so when you, right when, you, when you see ocelons forming, they don't look exactly like this, but they look similar to that. Very similar. Mm -hmm. this, is probably, this is probably closer to that. Now, the reason, another reason for bringing this up is that consciousness itself has elements of this sort of structure. It's not known uh, much in the public domain. Uh, right. And I, I wanted to, you know, just dump this information on you guys, let you run with it. It's it's worth checking out. And then the one of the key articles here is the elephant migration patterns. When you open the conversation, you were talking about behavioral dynamics with animals. And you were talking about, uh, hold on a second. We're talking about the uh, the interest in cascades, mm -hmm. and so here um, these articles that, like the dragon kings and black swans. These are uh, animal behavior patterns and also patterns that occur in the markets. And so the cascades mm -hmm. that you're talking about uh, can actually be viewed and modeled and understood from multiple perspectives. So I just I just wanted to bounce that off to you. So that that's I'll let you guys take the mic yeah. again. That's just what I wanted to contribute. Awesome, uh, buddy. You want to? You, 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 should I jump that's, in? That's fabulous. Um, I could just say uh, one thing about cellular automatons, and all the mathematicians that I'm working with are are going gun ho now about cellular. Now imagine and consciousness. As angels out there that we can communicate, but buddy, repeat that you broke um, out for a second. So automatons, buddy, you just uh, broke. You're breaking up pretty bad, but okay. Let me uh, stand up here. Is that better? Is that better, guys? Yeah, I think that's better. Please, okay. yeah, repeat that last bit. 
um, cellular automatons and, and consciousness and, and flows of consciousness, how you were just showing that, the mathematicians I'm working with are going bonkers over these. Because sure. if you take the real world application is, the Doherty set is basically nothing but spinors or uh, twisters, um, yeah. which are which are are just a whole series of a forest of vortices, which are composed of hop vibrations. Yeah, hop vibrations, larger scale, smaller scale. Um, now, now that's what the cellular automatons are. If these mathematicians who are building these three D simulations were to do cellular automatons that work based off of vorticity or the vortexture of the um basically the vortex dynamics of the doherty set like you said it would build the 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 lashing like a lashing of a whip we have these consciousness tendrils that go out like whips and yep. we can create plasma vortices with them yep. and and donuts and tunnels and holes and all sorts of weird things yeah but now the the geometry of it is these is similar to the cellular automatons which you posted, um, but if if they could create them more like kind of turning the Doherty set alive in a way, but almost doing the rules of uh, uh, Conway's game of life rules, um, then then you could literally create these these tendrils, um, and that's how you control wind with your breath, and how you control like literally. Like you get information from the sun this way through these tendrils. It's fractals, filaments, and frequencies. Let, let me jump in here for a sec. Let, let's let's define some of that because I think the segue from uh, the game of life thing is interesting. So I've done. I have access to all this software, right? I I do um, fluid dynamic sims, particle sims, re reaction diffusion sims, um, cellular auto automata. And really what it comes, what I think it comes down to is that you have this recursive, I mean, I know it sounds really simplistic, but the recursive geometry and the geometry at all dimensions or scales, scalar waves and multidimensionality rolled into like what is physically happening, which is plasma layers. And if you look at these experiments that you just shared, which are great, um, I just want to, like, the the Belusov-Jabotinsky reaction stuff. So Jasper, the rocks, like crystals, grow in these cellular diffusion patterns. Um, and, and, what it, and, and even the name, reaction diffusion, when you apply this to these particles, is essentially a rule set and a medium. And the rule set and the medium guide the particle uh, or the, the, the point of matter into whatever manifestation it may be. Even the words reaction diffusion are like rarefaction compression. It's it's wave fronts and it's and then it, it, so so gradation as uh, plasma bubbles so so to speak grow outwards, and you'll see tubes. there's uh, well the uh, tubes think tubes tubular but like but tubes like, uh, like like hang on just hear me out okay like a, a umbilical. There's always a tube. There's always a connection to the last. But to There's make a tube, a you're, you're adding, you're basically, you basically sweep <coughs> a, a, a series of these geometries along a spline. So yes, tubes, but I, I feel like ultimately this, if you scroll up a little bit, um, Doc, you, the image right above this one, yeah, go uh, right under the eye, under the eye, the, exactly. Right here is all the geometry of nature um, interacting, right? So every point of light, star or lymph node on a, on a network of veins and neurons, it's imprinted on our hands. So what I was gonna say about the reaction diffusion stuff is if you look at your finger, the tip of your finger has this exact thing in real life, in situ. So like what you're saying, Doc, is so important. Um, like simulations are really important in lab experiments, but in real world, we already, ha well, in my opinion, I know it sounds very arrogant, but I think there are several examples of this geometry in action. Uh, one of them being uh, the pictures from space, right? So for me, I do the moon. And if you look at the moon, you'll see the moon, uh, like left and right uh, in this particular, what is it? Um, the angel, where is it? This looks like, like basically, if you took the Orion Nebula 
on one side and mirrored it. But really what's going on here is that you also see to the left and right a sea of serenity and sea of tranquility. If you superimpose a sugar molecule, you'll see the hexagon and the pentagon with a, with a, with a shared boundary in the center. They're all following... Uh, if you look at a honeycomb, if you look at bubble theory, this is why Buddy and I chatted uh, and really kind of connected on this earlier is because I've been thinking for years that like, um, why, why does, you know, not, not does it, you know, like for 20 years, I listened to documentaries that are like, this spiral is like that spiral is like this honeycomb is like that honeycomb is this square is like that thing. And we're just giant. Ver and they, they, they superimpose the eye on top of the solar system, you know, and it's not to, to downplay that that's all important. But I feel like, uh, especially in 2019, for me, I've gotten so kind of past the point of does it ex does all, uh, does the geometry uh, uh, jive throughout all the uh, scalar dimensions uh, and yes the answer is it certainly jives mm -hmm. um, and the yeah. reason it does now that I understand it is that if you apply this intrinsic geometry this hyperboloid with the torus and the vortexial waves you basically you, you just throw all like the primer fields uh, with Sapphire, with Don Scott, with like the youth of the universe and the fact that it is electric and dynamic, and you start getting like literally like I'm throwing a lot of thoughts in here at once, but you can see like uh, there are these time lapse things of a newt uh, uh, existing from literally a hexagon or a circle really that meets uh, uh, strong boundaries and Geometry. then creates creates mm -hmm. the hexagon because. It's the strongest mm -hmm. form in nature. Uh, you see this in bubble videos. And then as these cells grow out, it looks like honeycombs. And then those become mm -hmm. superstructure and they become the, the, the accumulated awareness of their own little plasma bubble at, through time because every oscillator like the heart <laughs> is creating a layer. Like, I, I feel like the, the etheric plasma bubble, the aura or the biomorphic field or the uh, morphogenic, morphogenetic field that Rupert Sheldrake talks about is essentially like when your heart exists, it's a little hexagon that grows and it becomes this incredible muscle and, and it starts to create its own larger plasma sheath and then around the body. And so every second, every, every instance that we exist, a, a particle instance or, or a, a matter instance, uh, we create a sheath of plasma that is not only around every single particle of us, but around our entire body as well and, uh, and are around our town and our cities. This is why cities look like neural networks. This is why planets mm -hmm. at a distance look like neural networks. This is why your hand has this exact geometry baked in, dendritic structures, Lichtenberg patterns, uh, recursive mm -hmm. hyperboloid geometry. Networks um, and systems follow a same geometry as veins, and it's all coming down to Lichtenberg's. Lichtenberg yeah. figures, which is so, pressure and the release of pressure on any system produces these patterns. Right. Which that's the, that's the, those are the rules, right? So, so that's yeah. what I was saying earlier. If you want to create a react, reaction diffusion uh, experiment, you basically say, here, you're an instance and you have these parameters, like this level of viscosity or this amount of distance between the next instance. And, uh, and, and that's what essentially creates path of what we consider path of least resistance or Lichtenberg patterns, um, branching, right? Branching needs parameters. And, you know, people uh, are so aware, uh, wary of like saying, you know, the hidden hand of God or the hidden hand of the Illuminati, which whoever's controlling, but controlling is this geometry interacting with itself across all dimensions at all times while also creating plasma. Uh, information or well, at or maybe imprinting on plasma information all right uh, for times time. yeah for time's sake let's hear uh let's close it out let's hear what doc has to say and then we'll close it out and uh and this has been really good uh just constructive uh talk about uh the geometries got anything else to say doc uh yeah uh, um there's a really awesome video um, that was done by a guy named Sky Shields. Um, I've had a chance to uh, chat with him a few times. Uh, he was basically, uh, I'm not a huge fan of LaRouche, um, but I know that for some time LaRouche, uh, the uh, LPAC, 
group in the States had quite a lot of funding going towards teaching uh, high um, practical and abstract uh, geometry to their uh, youth movement thing. Um, I'm, I'm so glad you, know, you brought that up. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, but, but, what, but what was interesting in, in, in the LaRouche youth movement was that there was a subset of them that they wanted to pursue kind of the higher, uh, you know, mental ideas and they didn't like the restrictions that was coming. Like there was um, a, a series done by one of their folks, which is actually phenomenal. It's called something like uh, Ryman for Dummies or no, Ryman for Anti-Dummies. That's probably one of the best single sources for anyone that's at an amateur to even sort of like, you know, mid-level um, getting up to speed with, you know, important things related to projective geometry. Uh, but the thing with Sky Shields is the, the guy is just a brainiac. And what he had done is he did a series of videos in one of the videos. He talked about, he uh, it was similar to the morphic field structure. He was using some other kinds of terminology as well. But what he was doing was he was giving clear examples in identifying how similar emergent patterns uh, occur and have occurred on the planet. And it had to do with typing, uh, like uh, almost like an archetypal type field. So example would be, uh, he said that, you know, in North America, we would say have like a timber wolf. So we would have a wolf-like animal. And then if you go across different parts of the planet, you would have, you know, different variations, you know, you'd have like the Siberian wolf. You basically would have certain kinds of features or attributes or characteristics that would be wolf-like. But what he said <clears throat> was that this, you know, field of energy, this information field of energy that was, you know, going towards defining the shape and characteristic of the entity, he said that this was likely a universal constant not simply something that was, you know, uh, implicit on our planet or implicit in certain geographic areas, but he said that it, that it was implicit across species lines. And, and one example that he gave was that there's some kind of a marsupial. <clears throat> I can't remember if it's in Australia and or New Zealand. It may just be in New Zealand, but it's literally the marsupial wolf. And marsupials have no family connection. There's no family connection between canines and marsupials. I mean, no meaningful one, right? So when you take a look at the characteristics of the marsupial wolf, and you see, you know, how very similar, you know, um, it is in shape and form. Uh, and he went on to use a whole bunch of different uh, examples of where this kind of uh, scenario occurs. Uh, we have a real, you know, we have real world examples of an information field that exists. One of the things I would I would suggest to you about the Doherty set is that I've followed this for some time. I've liked what I've seen. I can see the value in it. It should have been done, and it's good that you showed up to get it done. Um, but what I would suggest to you is the value of the Doherty set will be in. And what I mean by that is. Um, <clears throat> there, there's you some very rare documents. A little bit. Sorry, say again. You broke up a little bit. I didn't hear that. There, there, there's, there's some rare documents. They're not easy to get a hold of. They were only archived on the Mueller site for a period of time before their servers went down. I think some of the papers have been distributed to other nodes, but um, they did all, all kinds of papers on so many different things that would be relevant to your Doherty set research. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. think I think I think I think what needs to happen is that um, you know when, when you say that there is a tube to everything, uh, I don't I don't have any argument. I don't have any need to dispute that. What I would say is that the functionality that you see in the Doherty set will tend to reside within a certain domain, but that domain is interstitial. And what I mean by that is that. You know, you, you guys with topology, you know that when you go up yes. or down in dimension, 
you either add or you take away characteristic. Like, so for yes. example, if, if, okay, so if, if anyone's listening to this right now, uh, you know, we, we take the simple idea of a sphere. The sphere has latitude, longitude, altitude. So we basically, we have three angles, uh, you know, up, down, you know, widthwise, you know, you know, horizontal, vertical. So with a Doherty set, I think what you're going to find is that there will be a domain where the the structure and the you know uh, expression is very defined, very noticeable. But when we go up or down dimensions, it's like it will. Uh, and, and you know, you've got a background in Hopf vibration, so you already know kind of where I'm going with this. But you'll you'll see it transform or transmute or change the higher or lower you go. Uh, dimensionally. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. The, okay. the amount of detail is, um, is, is lost uh, right. on scale from, from one scale jump to the next scale. You could call it magnitude or dimension yeah. or shift. Oh, yeah. In, um, it's, it's, it's intervallic. It's what you were saying earlier. It's, it's, about, it's about resonance, right? So you're viewing a certain point of the shell from a certain part of the other shell. So a scale, right? Or a note or a fret on the fretboard. Mm -hmm. Like when you create a sympathetic resonance, then you can see it, what we, what we consider clearly or have definition. And as you're going through, sliding through the scale, or moving through so, the inter, like creating different intervals, like minor thirds and major thirds and octaves. Yes, yes, yes indeed. Like a flute. different ways. Right. Yeah, we we consider optics as this thing that just exists. You know, we see things, yeah. but, but seeing <laughs> is is related to this exact fun math function. You know, well, right, focal, going along, think, yeah, sorry, go real ahead. quick, going along with what Doc was saying, that's why. I've been waiting so long to release my first book because timing is everything. And we weren't ready for it before Dan Brown's Da Vinci Code. And we're ready for it now. You know, like pe people didn't give a shit about all the stuff that I would, was saying, everyone around me, you know, and then I, it's a very lonely game. And then you have to find your crew. And then you, you, once you find your yeah. camp, whatever. Yeah. But this is what, this is what I'm saying. This, Can I suggest something is, really esoteric? Because hang on, real quick. The yeah. hype is I'm releasing the universe game, and that's what that's what the proof is already out there. Everybody's already um, uh, measuring it and measured it, and the golden mean calipers are going to be everywhere because it's one of the most important things to understand. Um, and, and these books, as they come out, I have three levels of books. I have children's books. I have, um, the, that are all already done and have characters and, and, and I have a, uh, a, a Harry Potter type book that, um, and then I have the, the universe game and they're all explaining the same thing. And, and last month. I've been studying the Doherty set for 16 years or so. Last month, I created seven, eight new Doherty sets based off of new octaves. So they're, um, and they scale out exactly like this one fans out, and you can see new resonances. So the Doherty set isn't the is all be all um, because it's, it happens to be invariant. Uh, in the cube and in the square law, like like light is, there's other ones. There's all sorts of other ones. So as much as I've found in the Doherty set and can be found in the Doherty set, all these other ones are going to be open too. And I, as still we open I still, them, I still, I still think open that. Them, go ahead. No, I I think that you've done significant work there. Sorry, Thank I didn't mean. You. Please continue. Um, so as we open them, we're going to go into the circuit. We are going to go into the matrix, into the into the I three. I call it the I three. We're going to be able to be a possum. We're going to be able to be any human that ever existed. Any it, it reward, rewind, and fast forward it. There is a neural uh, core sample. There's a core samples of all neural networks. It's it going into the akasha. We're literally going to do it. These these tunnels and these tubes don't exist for no reason. And and the more that we find, the more creatures that we find that ac actually pop out of this, we can it, it, it's a very predictive set. So it predicts what creatures are going to be next. 
based off of the higher level octave, uh, and you can see what it turns into. You can see the bu a butterfly turning from an egg into a butterfly with the wings. You can see um, humans, what are humans going to be next, you know, um, based off of uh, the recursions and the actual scaling itself. The field itself makes the shape. Th then the shape comes out of the form because the resonance is there. Um, you know, humans can appear all over the universe because they existed once, you know. Anyway, I, but for I, the sake of time, guys, um, I, I got to get to my family uh, Christmas bet. party here. Uh, I, I appreciate you sharing that. This is just a, if you're not familiar already, yes. um, I would suggest that this would tie in really good with what you're doing. And that's Sternheimer's scaling wave. Uh, Ooh, uh, yeah, the the original foundation and primary work for working with these scaling notions actually came from Sternheimer. Um, and not uh, only did he develop it originally, but he also demonstrated and uh, revealed how to functionally use it. So um, he actually talks about how organic life can be directly modulated um, with this and other uh, related discoveries. But um, because you're working with things like scale, uh, it's it's really meaningful for you to get a grasp on what his approach was, because I think it'll provide insights into the work you're already doing. So this Dude, this is a thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is on Rex Research. Oh, uh, Rex Research, as in Rex Bear, or. Uh, Rex research is just, it's like a, it's an archive of oh, um, an archive. Okay. Yeah. Dude, uh, if he, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, per, I, the stuff that you've been saying has been ridiculously pertinent and I would love it if you could uh, join us in another episode, if you find your time. Um, I think, I think, see the Doherty set is open source and as soon as it becomes available readily available next year 2020 full vision yeah. love is watching yeah um it's going to change the game i believe and and i've been hyping it up for qu quite enough and and we ourselves are going to um continue to compile scientific papers that without a doubt uh show that this is exactly how things are going um and i, I could care less you know but it is how it's happening but it's cool to see and i love it i'm addicted to discovering I haven't I haven't showed the amount of research that I've showed is like is like point zero one of the yeah. hundreds of thousands of images that I have and okay. um, just backing up black hole research uh, Eric Lerner's model Eric Lerner's still alive the Doherty set totally stars form and intergalactic black holes and stuff I I, I think it's that's, uh, my, uh, oh, that's my main work. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Bill Beatty. Uh, he was a buddy of uh, Decker's on the old KeeleyNet. But he talked about how hard it is for someone who's an independent science researcher to get traction. So what, one thing I would encourage you in is, you know, keep on with that pursuit. I think one of the things that happens to people in this domain is that if somebody starts to get, you know, media notoriety, often it goes to their heads and they go through some kind of like chaotic burnout. In my particular right. situation, in my particular situation, I've received media notoriety, but I've always capped and managed it in the sense that um, if somebody approaches me and they want me to do a show or they want to talk to me, and then they've got some kind of notion in their head by what they think they perceived of me through the media. Right away, I try to make the effort to just, you know, let's just brush that aside and let's just talk as people. Like, you know, and so what one of the things that I see happening though is when people get this kind of attention and they begin to, especially if they begin to monetize or they get some kind of tangible benefit from it. Uh, one thing, I'm sure that you are already aware of this or know this, um, they can become idealized or used as kind of like, um, well, if they can do it, I can do it. So you'll see, ne you know, Nassim Haramein prancing about on the stage, and he's, he's, you know, saying a bunch of things, and part of it seemed to be kind of familiar or similar to what you know you may think about or whatever. 
Um, what I would su suggest to you is keep to your good original ideas and be and really, 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 really scrutinize people that seem to have the microphone that are out there. Because a lot of the a lot of the times they're boneheads. You know, they they don't know what right. they're talking. They don't know what they're talking about. They haven't really done the work that you have. And all that's yeah. happened is is through is through some kind of weaselly maneuvering and opportunism. They put themselves in a situation where they're getting a lot of attention, and you can't figure out why you're doing all this like meaningful work and you're not getting any support. So what I would suggest yeah. to you is don't let that get to you, because you know mm -hmm. like your your time will come, and you want and when your time comes, you want to make sure that it's based on the merit of your intention and your work, and not based on some ridiculous social meme engineering that's going on. Do you know what I mean? Oh, a hundred percent. I, I, I play in all sorts of different things. Um, I, I do music. I'm dressed like a freaking clown right now. Kind of not a clown. Some people would say it looks like a clown, but it's, it's style. I know like I've, my whole life has been a psychological experiment on people and how they react on the colors that I wear. And how they treat me from day to day differently based off of what I wear, even if I act the same. So um, that being said, I've I, I've I'm I've already been kind of embracing. I already know that this is what's going on and how it is. So when I when Don Scott saw it and his jaw dropped and he said, "When did you create that?" and I'm like, "2003." He's like, "You beat me to it." I'm like. It's not about who be who to it. It's about that the message gets out there. That's yeah. all I could say. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was already yeah. humbled. I don't care. You know what yeah. I mean? I work my ass off. I'm a painter. Yeah. And and yeah. honestly, I do all this on the side. So it's yeah. driven. It's passion. It's pure. Nothing but blood, man. I had a vision yeah. in 2003, and God put His hand on me, and it's never yeah. gonna stop. So I, I really appreciate your um, uh, your warnings, though. I've seen money destroy, destroy people last year and the year before. <laughs> well, so, you know, yeah. I, there, there, there's nothing like it. You know, there's nothing wrong with making money for hard work that you've done. Uh, the, uh, to my mind, the danger comes in where we begin to compromise our integrity and our character becomes corrupt when we lose sight of what the real purpose is. So, you know, if money gets made. And the money gets directed towards you know the right things in life. There's no problem, but yeah. when money gets when money gets made and you know people begin to substitute, well, I need to have my ego massage constantly, and I'm now experiencing narcissistic impulses. Um, right. That's that's dangerous. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, so, and I've uh, seen I've seen I've I've seen narcissists that are mental narcissists and narcissists sure. that are heart narcissists. You bet. And. And it takes some sort of any type of ego to do any type of show or be a do anything really to lead. Yeah. So I but I vibe with the heart narcissists versus mind narcissists because you can tell the difference. They're cold. You can literally tell the difference. That's why I believe it's not a simulated universe. It's a living. Well, not the reason why. Not the sole reason. It's a living, breathing, pulsating universe. And when they everybody's going to want us to believe it's a simulation. Yeah. That's the direction where everybody's pushing, and yeah. I'm going right against the stream, swimming the other way, baby, saying, ah, yeah. uh -uh, this is organic. This is life. Don't forget the umbilical. Forget the core. Yeah. Don't forget your connection. So on that note, guys, my begging for me. I love you guys. Great episode. I would love it for you guys to come back on uh, next week or whenever you guys find time. Uh, we're getting to it, man. And this, these books... I'm, um, this tour next year, um, the Thunderbolts project is going to be big. Uh, so, absolutely sculpting. I mean, it's going to be fun. And yeah, I'd love I, for you guys to join. I I appreciate the invitation. Uh, thank you, and so look forward to it. Um, let's let's continue forward. Uh, also, if you I don't know if you if you're uploading this to a YouTube something something, but if you have a link for this, I'll uh, I'll get it out to my group here too. Awesome. Um, the the raw form will be copied. Everyone will get a, a copy in it right after. But um, I will uh, go through it and reformat it, and then I'll uh, send the group it, and you'll see it on Facebook too. Sure. All right. Yeah. 
All right, all right you guys, guys, have a good day. Have a beautiful weekend. Thanks. All right. Thanks Cheersies. for being here. Bye. All right. Bye. Whew. Oh, man. There we go. Man, it just gets the blood flowing. I'm so happy and honored to be here um, with a group of like-minded individuals. Anybody can join here. Um, really kicking it up to the next notch. Excited for uh, the release of the Universe game, 2020, Love is Watching, and Buddykins. Oh yeah, that's what I said, Buddykins. That's the kid books coming out. The Geometric View is Love is Watching product, Love is Watching production. Thank you for doing that. Executive Producers. Geometric View, our buddy James, and Brighton Cotter. Music is by the acronym Beauty, the acronym B-U-D, and Abyssal Dionysus is the geometer. That's me and Brighton. Thanks for being here. Catch you next Saturday.